Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be changing the free wheel on my electric XP e-bike from the factory installed 13 to 28 tooth to an 11 to 28 tooth. And basically what that's going to do, if you guys watched any of my other videos, you'll know that when I'm trying to reach a top speed up to 28 miles per hour, once I get past about 20, it's hard to keep resistance on the pedals and it feels like you're just pedaling like crazy trying to keep up with the motor and this is going to allow you to have resistance on those pedals and help it out a little bit easier. Now it is going to keep the 28 tooth gear which is your first gear so you're still going to have the same uh, hill climbing capabilities as you do with the original gearing if you're in first gear but it does change some of the gearing on some of the other uh, sprockets on here so some of that's going to change but most importantly the 13 is going to change to 11 which is going to allow what I've said a little bit earlier here. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to show you exactly what tools you need to change this, how easy or how hard it's going to be to change. I'm hoping that I have all the right tools. Now the only special tool that you really need is this little free wheel remover tool and uh, this one's a little bit shorter than the actual one so I'm hoping this one will work. We're going to find out but I'll put a link below to my free wheel to this or to the actual tool that you need and all the other accessories that I have on my electric e-bike. And if you guys haven't seen that video yet, um, it's been, I've been getting a lot of really good feedback on it. I'll go ahead and post a link in the description below guys. So please check that out. And I'll probably be making another accessory video here soon too, because I got a bike lock and a few other things that I'm going to be putting on my bike that I didn't do in, in my original uh, video. So I hope you guys enjoy and hope you guys learned something here today. If you haven't done so yet, please hit that like button and that subscribe so that you guys don't miss any of my future videos. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hey guys, uh, full disclaimer, I'm really no mechanic, so uh, do these uh, modifications at your own risk. All right guys, so basically this is the free wheel that I'm gonna be putting on and it's a DNP 11 to 28 tooth. This is the tool you need. I'll put all the links below. Uh, you may need a large flathead screwdriver. You're going to need some side snips, a set of metric Allen wrenches, and an 18 millimeter wrench to take off your wheel. Uh, if you don't have a whole set of Allen wrenches, you at least need a 5 millimeter. So basically, the way I have my bike propped up here, I have a work platform. I put the rack on that with a piece of foam underneath it. And I set the handlebars up on some foam blocks that I had, but you can put two by fours underneath here if you had, if you didn't have foam blocks. You just want to get it up enough not to crush your display or not for it to rest on that display. But this is how I figured that I would, uh, I would put the bike here, make it easily able to work on. And basically, uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to take the, the your side snips and snip off the little zip tie that's on your motor side. You need to snip it off right here so that you can uh, free up this cable and unplug your rear wheel motor from right here. You just unplug, so you snip this and unplug this and that uh, frees up this cable here. You'll see there's a bunch of pins on there. Uh, when you plug this back in, there's going to be arrows here. You just want to make sure these arrows line up and that all these plugs, uh, prongs plug in together correctly. So there I have my wire unhooked. And like I said, when you remove this cap, you're going to have to be careful to move it down this wire here just to get it out of the way a little bit. You'll see how your uh, wire comes through your axle there. This is going to be the first time I'm going to be taking this back wheel off and I have read and heard there's a lot of issues with the frame being really tight on the back wheel so it's hard to get out and very hard to get back in. So we're going to go over how hard or easy that is to uh, take out and put back in and maybe a cool little trick that I've seen on the Facebook forum I believe it was to help you uh, expand that frame. So we're going to go ahead and try this here and another reason why I'm, I'm kind of glad that I'm doing this here at my house is because if I do get a flat out on the trail I'm going to know what's involved with taking this off and changing the tube if I need to if I'm really far out you know miles away or whatever. Alright guys so now the next step is to take the 18 millimeter wrench and loosen up your two axle bolts. Now when you change this, I believe it's going to be easier to remove when the chain is in 7th gear, which is on the smallest, because uh, it's going to move that out all the way, and it's going to be on your smallest uh, 
sprocket there. So make sure you guys are in uh, seventh gear whenever you do this. Man, they're pretty tight. And another thing, guys, is that you want to really pay attention the way that these, uh, the way that your shims and everything are on on your uh, axle here. Now, once you get this side loose, you could take your protection bracket off of here. It just slides right over that bolt. All right, so I got both sides loosened up. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your five millimeter um, Allen wrench and you're gonna take this bolt out here. Basically, the only thing that this does is it keeps your axle from coming out of your frame here. All right guys, so now I'm just gonna try to push this up out of here with my thumbs. You can see that side's loose. Let's try this side. All right, it came out, no problem. I'm hoping I got the good camera angle here, guys. Now on this, you just wanna uh, pull this down like this and remove your rear, rear wheel. So that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be, guys. You just wanna make sure your locking ring on either side goes back on the exact same way it come off. So please uh, pay attention to the way that those come off and make sure either you take pictures or memorize that so that it goes back on this exact same way. All right guys, next thing you need to do is slide this completely off this wire and then take this axle nut completely off. It slips over neat over top of your connector there and then take this shim off. Now the other side, you don't really have to take completely off but like I said, just note the way this is on here. Um, I'm going to note that this, uh, this notch that slides in the frame here is on the same side that it's notched out for your wire to go through. So you want to make sure this goes back on the same way and not like this. Because you can put it on upside down like that. So as I said, I'm going to note that this goes on the same way as this notch here. And I believe that this, this notch here, when it goes back together, will be in your frame like this. All right guys, so now one other thing you're gonna need is a larger adjustable wrench or a wrench to fit this free wheel tool. I'm not sure exactly what size it is, but basically now this free wheel tool, what it does is you just slide it over your wire here, slide it into your free wheel, and then you're able to unscrew your free wheel. Now these are uh, threaded on there normally, so righty tighty lefty loosey. So you just wanna spin it uh, this way here to loosen it up. And you'll see without the tool, this will just spin on here. So you need that tool to actually spin the inside of the free wheel off. So got it spun off. You'll see how the tool just kind of grabs those teeth around there and spins it right off. Now, uh, one thing I want to mention, guys, is a free will is not the same as a cassette. A cassette, you're able to change these. A free will, you are not. The free will spins on with these threads here, spins onto your, your hub. And you'll see there's a little, uh, a little spacer here. So I'm going to go ahead and compare these two, put them side by side, see if there's any differences. And then we're going to go ahead and install the new one. You'll see here the backside does look a little differently. Uh, this one actually looks a lot more beefy than the, than the factory one.
All right, guys, so one thing I noticed is that shim that's on the axle, you do need to remove it, because you can see here, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but with the shim underneath the old one, it lines up exactly, you can see here, with the new one. If you were to leave the shim on the wheel, that's gonna set this new one way up here like this, and it's gonna be way off offline with your shifter and just everything in general. So definitely need to remove this spacer here. All right, one thing to note here, guys, is this is almost in line right with, with this here on the old one. And with the new one, it sticks way out off of that and gives you a big gap here. That's the reason why you have to remove this spacer. Then when you install the new one, you'll see with that spacer removed, it lines up pretty, pretty evenly, just like the old one, and gives you about the same space here. So yeah, definitely remove this big spacer. All right guys, so I got the new free wheel put on. And now you wanna reinstall your shim here or your retaining, uh, not sure what this is called, but basically it keeps your, your axle from spinning in your frame. Basically you slide it back over your wire with this pointing out. And then you want, like I said before, this, this lined up with where your wire comes out. And you see it fits on there nice. Then you can go ahead and slip your nut over and go ahead and start it with the threads on there. All right, now the fun part, guys. Now let's try to see if we can get this back in here without having to spread this frame. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna see how hard this is to spread. Actually, I can see it spreading just by hand a little bit so I may be able to pull it apart just enough to get it to slide down in there let's go ahead and give this a shot guys so put that back on the smallest gear This, this is kind of hard to do with trying to film. Basically you want to line, make sure your square part of your axle is square with your frame. I could kind of see why some people have a hard time getting it in. Now I'm gonna basically pull on the frame here and I'm gonna push on the kickstand part here just to kind of spread the frame by hand and see if it drops in. All right, so I have it started but not in all the way yet. Um, you'll see that this doesn't line up yet. So that's what's nice about this thing here. You'll know that it's all the way in when you're able to get your bolt in. Um, the hardest part I realized was not spreading the frame. It was trying to spread the frame while trying to get this to line up in your uh, disc brake here because it was hitting the pads inside. It may be a little easier to remove this, but I didn't really want to mess with my adjustment. So I was able to, to get it in there. So now I'm going to spread the frame, like I said before, with putting my palm of my hand on here and holding the axle so it doesn't slide off. <clears throat> and then pulling on the frame right here while keeping my thumb on the axle here to kind of push it down in and then I'm going to push and pull the frame apart just slightly and I think it just dropped it, yep it just dropped in so it's uh, all the way down on there you can see it's touching and then on this side it's all the way down. You can see the bolt holes line up here for this. And if you pull that away, you'll see it's all the way down and touching. 
So not bad at all guys to get back on my frame. I, uh, a lot of other people had issues. I didn't have much problem. Just put your palm on here, pull on here to kind of spread the frame just a little bit and it dropped right in for me. So yeah, not that bad at all. Now, one thing I did see, the trick that I seen and I was gonna use it here if I couldn't figure this out or couldn't get this frame to spread wide enough apart. If you put a, a ratchet strap on either side of the frame and attach it to either two posts, I've seen a guy on Facebook uh, forums do that, or your uh, loops on a truck bed, or if you're out on a trail, maybe between two trees. And it's funny because the uh, first time I went on the bike trail and went uh, pretty far, I had two straps in my bag just in case, but looks like I may not need them uh, if I had to change an entire tube when I changed the flat. Now I did see some people could change a flat without taking the whole wheel off. I mean, you have plenty of room here. These, uh, you could uh, take the tube out, patch it, put it back in without taking the entire uh, tire off if the hole's not super bad. So, all right, now let's go ahead and slip this bracket back on, which just sits on here like this and basically tighten everything back up. The only thing I'll have to do is once I take it for a ride is to see how it's shifting gears. I may need to adjust uh, my minimum and maximum uh, screws here for my derailleur for it to be shifting correctly, but it kind of looks uh, as it's lined up perfectly with where it was at before. So I'm hoping I don't have to adjust anything. All right, guys, so now that I got the wheel back on, the last step is to plug it back in and install the new small zip tie. Like I said before, you just wanna make sure that these arrows line up on this plug perfectly. Don't forget to put this back on. I almost just forgot. <laughs> Got that back down through there. You just want to plug this back in, make sure those arrows line up. And use your new zip tie to secure your wires. Be careful not to get it around, get your zip tie around your shifting cable. All right, guys, so here's a comparison between the old gearing and the new gearing. So the, the first gear is gonna stay the same on both. First gear is the same. Second gear both has 24 teeth, so those will stay the same. You'll see the third gear on the new one is 21 teeth, which is a completely new gear, which was between third and fourth on your old gearing. Then you'll see fourth gear is 18, which was your old fifth gear. So you'll still have that gear, but you'll, you'll have to go into fourth to get it instead of fifth. And then on your fifth gear, you'll have 15 teeth, which is also a new gear, which would have been between sixth and seventh gear. Your sixth gear is gonna be 13 tooth, which is gonna be your old seventh gear. And then here's your new gear, the reason that I changed mine, and that is gonna be the 11 tooth sprocket, which is gonna be a new gear. So you got three new gears, and then you have four of the same gears before, you're just gonna have to be in a different gear for them to work other than first and second. Hopefully that didn't confuse you guys. So there's the new gearing with the new uh, 11 to 28 tooth sprocket. This is the old one with the 13 to 28 tooth free wheel. So there you go guys. I hope that helps you understand the difference between the two. Now I did hear that they do have a um, 11 to 32 tooth. Now that's gonna 
really give you a low gear for climbing really steep hills. I'm not sure how it changes your other gearing, but that one probably would have been a pretty good one to go with if you if you have very steep hills. But I find it in my area, I find the initial uh, 28, 28 tooth to be plenty for me. A lot of times I'm in second gear with 24 teeth climbing the hills around my house. So I found this one to be fine. Um, if any of you have the 11 to 32 tooth installed, please comment below and let me know if this has worked out for you guys, if it's been working. Cause my only concern was with the 32 tooth is that this would be so big here that it would interfere with this, um, maybe hitting the, the gearing. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but if any of you have put it on, I thought I heard of some of you putting it on before. So please comment below, and let us know how that worked out. All right guys, so I finally got the free wheel installed on the electric XP. We're gonna go for a ride here in a little bit after I cut my grass and see how this thing does. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Please hit that like button if you found this interesting or helpful. And make sure you guys leave a comment below. It really helps my channel out. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you share, share this video everywhere so that everybody sees it. I'd appreciate it. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to cut it there and follow this up with a part two and give you guys my honest thoughts and opinion after my test drive. So don't forget to hit that bell so you guys don't miss it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.